is the February um, fourth meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're also going to have a joint meeting with the um, Finance Committee at 6.30. Uh, we're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public uh, later on. All right, first item on our agenda, the minutes for the January 28th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah. Any changes or amendments? I, I did, um, but I sent it to Tom already, and it should it, be included. Included it in here. Here so. included. Okay. So there's nothing else. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the 28th of January. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda: We have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant, fifty thousand, forty-seven dollars; a payroll warrant of one hundred nine thousand three hundred ninety-four dollars; and a payroll deduction warrant. Of twenty-seven thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept those warrants. So I have a second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Oh, Bill, okay. do you have any meetings? Yes, I unfortunately had many meetings uh, last week. I was at a meeting every single night of the week. <laughs> um, so I, and I had to miss the select board meeting last Tuesday. Um, Oh, that was a week before that. A week before. The 29th was the Conway Garage subcommittee meeting that I went to. Um, and uh, I, I'm impressed with that subcommittee as currently constituted. I will say that. Um, Thursday was collective bargaining with Union 38. Uh, and. Uh, and then uh, with the teachers, and then collective bargaining at seven o'clock with the uh, with the IAs. And uh, yeah, Sa Saturday was here, thrilling um, uh, informational meeting, of Tornado Mountain. Uh, so, and then we're here again on Monday. Okay, Robert. So, for me too. It was a busy week last week. Um, I missed the garage meeting, but uh, so on Tuesday we had a capital improvement committee meeting, and we reviewed, uh, you know, the capital budgets and approved them. So it wasn't no big controversy, but we got it done. So we're making making progress on that. So we we still have progress to make on the plans, but but the, but the budgets for for this year for town meeting are good. Um, on, I think it was Thursday, I went to what's a really interesting meeting that it's hard for me to report on. I would love it if uh, Kenny were here to talk about it. But basically, it's a meeting about the future of the public safety communication system. And the very poor, the, uh, the, all of the radios that we have that allow all of our Franklin County public safety people to communicate with are are pretty decrepit and being well taken care of i mean a lot of maintenance but uh, are very old and they're way past their normal life mm -hmm. and the problem is what should the future be and we spent the meeting talking about two proposals one to rebuild the whole system kind of like we did 20 years ago and the other one is to join the state system when there are some towns that are very hesitant to trust that the state system isn't going to be a boondoggle or that the state is not going to care about little Franklin County out here very much. Mm -hmm. And there were people who spoke very positively about the state system, which already exists out here. The DCR communicates over the state system excellently. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the sense of the room was that we should go with the state system, but there were some questions people had, and so that they're going to try to get some more answers before we make a final decision. But it, but it, was, it was very interesting uh, and, and well done. And then Saturday, we were all here. Uh, I, I brought a camera and taped uh, Phil and Leah's uh, community outreach meeting. They gave a good presentation. It was 
reasonably well attended for a Saturday night. There might have been 20 people here or so, and, and the meeting was, I can tell you it was much longer than FCAT had expected, uh, given the battery that they gave me, it made it, but uh, they, they thought the meeting would last 20 minutes or 15 minutes, and I think it went two hours. Um, with a lot of questions, and it was, but it was very well done. So, mm -hmm. so your, your Thursday meeting, the the um, communication. So the communications meeting. I was approached by members of select boards of the neighboring towns that are on the, the teacher negotiating um, committee with me that um, was adamant that that this thing is is uh, that, that that we sort of need to stand together and keep. Greenfield from monetizing this thing and that no no so that's that that's a completely different uh, all right, communication all right. system that, no. that's that's not the, the, this is the radio system behind all of that that has to do with who does dispatch that there's a whole question over whether dispatch gets moved away from the state police and they have done dispatch very reliably for us and and to many people there it's an example of why we should trust the state. You know, at no cost to us, they provide the dispatch services. But it's using this radio. And there are a lot of dead spots around the county. Uh, the towers are, the uh, 13 towers that provide all of the interconnection are not positioned properly. They interfere with each other with their, you know, with their radio frequencies. And, uh, and what to do about that. And the, and the radios are old and decrepit. And when a radio dies these days, you really can't repair it, and they end up cannibalizing it to try to fix other radios. And you know, it's it's a problem of old, old, old electronics that we shouldn't be using anymore. <clears throat> yeah, the the um, the Franklin County Emergency Communication System, which is what you're talking yeah. about, has been on the agenda of every council meeting at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, every executive board meeting every finance committee meeting for like the last three or four years because it's it's a serious problem and rather than rebuild the system ourselves which will cost eight to ten million dollars meaning franklin county um joining the state system uh, is probably the best alternative although the state system runs on a higher kilowatt range uh megawatt range and, um, and it's digital compared to analog. And, it, and it's digital compared to analog, and the radios are very expensive, so the towns would have to uh, invest in new radios. But that looks like the alternative that everybody's moving toward, because it just, the other option, unless the state takes over the system, um, the towns in Franklin County be on the hook for major dollars mm. to rebuild the system. So it looks like um, the state, we're gonna, we're gonna get onto the state system there. And I went to this meeting expecting it to be about this back, huh. and, and, it, and it was not, so, that, but it was interesting. Okay, public comment. Anybody have public comment who's not on the agenda? No, okay. Okay, under old business, we have the Moore Trail Woodlands Partnership. Beth, what do you have for us? So, I'm Beth Gershman, I'm the representative for Conway, serving as the pleasure of the select board to the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. And I just came in today to um, do a very brief report on, on what has happened since the last time I talked to you, and to um, alert you to the probable next steps that would be good to take for Conway. Um, so, I think I, I sent to uh, Tom the December 2018 update, and he sent it to you all, but I'll just summarize it really quickly. So the um, state legislation, which creates a special designation for the 21 towns um, in the region of the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership, which is both Franklin and Berkshire County, um, passed as part of the state environmental bond bill this summer. So this is uh, kind of the culmination of uh, four years of the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership Advisory Committee, which is what I'm on. And um, that was like a collaborative legislation, you know, to, to move forward. It passed. So now the um, next step 
if Conway or any town wants to participate in and and make this a reality instead of just a just a probable thing happening, is um, uh, to get to get the project funded. To get it funded, eleven of the towns out of the twenty-one have to opt in, and that has to happen either by a vote from the select board and that's up to you or a vote at town meeting that's also up to you this would be an either or proposition um, and once 11 of those towns opt in then they'll establish a board then funding can be can start flowing to the project and that's the only way in which it could happen um, if uh, if 11 towns opt in, other, the other towns have a certain number of, I think, years to decide whether or not they're going to opt in, like three. Yes. Uh, can you clarify, uh, this is a, a voluntary program for yes. people within a town to put yeah. their land under uh, forest uh, management uh, or, or to to partake in the in the programs that this this offers this is a totally voluntary program so e even if the town of conway said yes this is something we want to be involved in then it's up to private landowners to decide if they're going to become part of the of the partnership program or not um, and there's a number of ways that they would access that so there's there's three kind of general pieces to this and one is um, uh, one that I'm thinking you might want to know more about is uh, supporting forest conservation on private lands. So that's generally something we're fairly familiar with in that it would be a conservation restriction. So there'd be more money for conservation restrictions. Would this have an impact on our tax dollars? Yes. State tax dollars. No, no, our own property yeah. tax dollars, certainly. Assessed value, you know, all that. Yeah. So, but just with this, with any conservation restriction, that's up to us to accept it or not. So, I, I, when I read through, uh, I'm Phil Cannon. I'm yes, hi, hi, Phil. Um, when I, I read through the thing, and I thought that there was a threshold beyond which it wouldn't, the, the conservation money wouldn't, and I thought we were past that threshold as a town, where where, where where it wouldn't where, where, they, where it wouldn't come out of your tag, uh, where you wouldn't I lose it. Yeah. Because we were over 40% state-owned or something, or over 30 I forget what the oh, threshold was. Okay. But I, well, but then I, I thought I remember seeing something I hope you're here. right. I think you're right. That would be good if you were right. So there's this, the, so the part, which I can certainly find out and get back to you. I can clarify that. So, so it does support forest conservation on private lands, and um, as well as carbon storage. So there's a possibility that there would be some sort of uh, broader statewide program to to uh, promote the idea of carbon storage in forest in forested woodlands. There's the possibility of um, increasing economic development with woodland products. The, their biggest hope is building like a forestry and tourism center. That's one of the things they want to do with the funding. Um, so the way I see this is there's a lot of program programs are out there that different private landowners either avail themselves of or not but this is one way to coordinate them in a in a in a better way I think in terms of management and helping to promote sustainable forest practices sustainable forestry practices and to get people together in different ways than they've been working before I I so the next step in terms of this project is for the select board to decide if they're going to opt in. Well, first you have to decide, do you want to be the people to make the decision to opt in, or do you want to bring it to town meeting? What, and, what do you see as the pros and cons of each of those two options? Well, <laughs> uh, I, I like the idea of involving more, more private landowners in the decision. Um, and I haven't found a way yet to, to do that. Last year I passed out brochures at town meeting with my phone number and my email address on them. Get in touch with me if you want to talk about this. No one has. 
you know, we've done a variety of outreach things. And um, I do like the idea of involving more people. Um, I have been involved in too many things where people have put a great deal of work and thought into a project or a proposal or an idea or a garage or whatever, and you bring it to town meeting and it's done in five minutes and that's very depressing to me. So I have different thoughts about this. Um, what do you think we should the do? Other that thing was is, a pro and a con. The <laughs> other thing is, is that because this is something that landowners would opt into privately, it, 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 I don't see a downside to it, frankly. I don't see a downside to it. Yeah, this, this project is supported by the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission, and the Franklin Land Trust. Yes. And it's, and it's, it's a complicated project. It is a complicated uh, project. So, so town meeting, uh, you're not going to get too far into the weeds at a town meeting on something like this. I'd, so. I'd, be, I'd be willing to present a town meeting, but I'd love it if you didn't. <laughs> the, 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 um, <laughs> uh, again, the complexity of this whole program yeah. is just, it's just not going to be understood. Yeah. Uh, even even with a with a presentation, even with a PowerPoint. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so the, but the next thing that will happen from the Franklin County Regional Council of Governments is you can uh, ask Peggy Sloan. She will she's scheduling meetings with every individual select mm -hmm. board and coming to present. Um, and she can also hold. She's very willing to hold the town information session. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I would be happy to be a part of the town. So we could kind of do the best of both worlds. That's okay. Would you recommend that we do? We as a board support it. Do I recommend that you? I support mean, I view you as somebody who was very skeptical when you joined this skeptical. group, and and then over the two years or how how long is it? Been? I've been on the I've been um, representing Conway for two years. Yeah. When I joined, I wasn't shy about saying I was skeptical about yeah. it for a variety of reasons. Um, I think that I was won over by the by the complexity of it actually mm -hmm. and by the many the many pieces of it that allow people to manage their private land in a variety of ways that make more sense to me. And, and I just want to fall back on this, which is that private land already can, people have the, people have the ability to manage their forested lands however they want, mm -hmm. if it's in private mm -hmm. ownership. We don't have a, we don't have much of a impact on that. And um, this is just a way to provide people more resources to, I hope, make, um, really smart decisions. There, there is a small group that opposes this yes, plan there's because of the production of wood pellets. But that's out of the plan now, completely out of the plan. It was originally in the plan, now yes. it's out of the plan. Yes. That was the major opposition to it, and now it doesn't seem like um, that's, that's... Well, I bet you there'll be still, there's still going to be opposition to this, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but but we took the wood, the, the partnership took wood pellets completely off the table. They added two seats to the board um, from, uh, from a public, one representing public health and one representing sort of ecosystem viability and the importance of uh, maintaining old growth and, you know, carbon friendly practices. Um, and then so they added the two seats and took the wood pellet plan out of there. So I think we re they really did listen to people's objections, but I'm not um, under any illusion that there's still there's still legitimate concerns. Mm -hmm. People have legitimate concerns about Sorry. forestry practices. I have them, but so I, my basic is just that our our foundational national environmental laws, our Clean Water Act, the Clean uh, Air Act. Has yeah. as their goal to restore uh, nature to untrammeled wilderness. Uh, and, and I don't then, know about that. Well, no, that's a statutory goal. But um, the 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 uh, and and now I guess that that's really kind of out of 
out of stock. Well, if you read if you read the state, that's, that's not the best thing for to be a carbon. Uh, untrammeled wilderness is apparently not the best carbon sink. Um, There's a lot of that's a more complicated issue than I think we possibly have time for okay. today. But um, my name. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say that our, if you look at the state um, goals for forestry management, they're they're pretty they're pretty good. They really are pretty good, I think. And um, it just depends on how they're how the how they're put in practice. One of the things that was in your update had to do with. Um, is, is the only way you can participate with the state to do, to do sustainable forestry, or is there a way that you can have your land conserved and not do any forestry? Yes. So that's okay? Yes, that's you can put a conservation, yes, you can absolutely put a conservation restriction on your land and have no management at all. And is there a designation for that? 61B uh, or 61 something? Or? Well, I, I have my land in 61B, which uh, you can have a bunch of designations, and one of them is wildlife habitat, mm -hmm. which you probably should manage something for anyway. Just <laughs> you know, certainly, certainly from a conservation and ecological perspective, uh, this program has far more negative, or far more positives than it does negatives. I think so. I do think so. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty convinced. There's a variety of reasons that people are hoping this will, this will work. And, and one of them is that um, smaller towns than us, you know, that rely heavily on, on the forest for a variety of things, including woodland products for economic, to keep their, t to keep people in town working and have, have economic benefits, as well as tourism, you know, they're really struggling. And anything that's going to help a place like Peru, for example, is, I think this is one of those things that will help much more than it will not help. So would you recommend that we invite Peggy Sloan in? Or, yes, I or, would I mean, we have had her in yeah. in the past, yeah. and we I, I would do recommend that. that we, will, we, will that. we will invite Peggy in and yeah. we'll on. And that it could happen within the next before town meeting would be smart. Yeah, I know okay. so, yeah. Great. Okay, sure. that's all I Thank have. You, Any ben. other questions? <laughs> Thank you for doing this. You know, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Nice yeah, good to meet you all. Bye. Bye. Next stop. Have a good night. Okay, next on the agenda, Philip and Mia Bowden regarding potential Thank cultivation you. preparation. All right, so um, I guess we're going to try and um, stick to the uh, marijuana host agreement application policy that the town sent out. Um, let, me, let me just introduce myself yeah. first. Hi, I'm Josh Scaller, um, Phil's brother, and part of the project. I saw you in profile. Oh, yeah. It's I like, uh, you look at me. You look at me. So where we are right now is I'm going to give a summary of the community outreach meeting that happened on Saturday. Um, in your folders, you should have a copy of um, the draft license application to the Cannabis Control Commission. I should be clear that it wasn't practical, practical to um, give you a template. There is no template. It's a series of click-throughs on the on the CCC website. Mm -hmm. So this is just a rough draft of what we're planning on doing. Um, and then uh, you want an expl explanation or a demonstration of how the applicant will comply with other applicable licenses or permits, as may be required by Conway Board's commissions, um, including information regarding compliance with Conway zoning bylaws, so we can talk a bit about that. Uh, and then in your packet, there's uh, a couple of draft host agreements, which probably that will be the concluding uh, part of at least our presentation to you all. Was this what you passed out yesterday? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. I never saw it, so I yeah. There you go. Pages in the proper order. <laughs> um, so if I if I may, I'll just begin with a summary of the outreach meeting. Um, the community outreach meeting was held at 7 p.m. on February 2nd, 2019, at the Conway Town Hall, located here. Uh, the meeting was in compliance with the Cannabis Control Commission, which I'll just refer to as CCC from now on, um, with their regulations and the Town of Conway's guidelines. This includes notification letters mailed to all abutters within 300 feet of the property and printed notification in the Greenfield Recorder <coughs> or the calendar days before the meeting. The Franklin County Regional School Committee uh, was also contacted, as well as Mass Wildlife District Supervisor Joe Rogers and FCAT. Additional notices were posted by the town, and a complete recording of the outreach meeting is available from FCAT. Um, so, meeting overview and highlights. The meeting was relatively well attended with a friendly atmosphere and productive dialogue. Uh, the meeting covered all key points mandated by the CCC and the town, as well as many other areas of interest. Copies of our draft proposal, as well as town and state regulations, were passed out. And the structure of the meeting was an introduction, uh, presentation of draft proposal, summary, reiteration of key points mandated for discussion by the CCC and town, and then a lengthy period of questions and answers. The introduction consisted of introducing ourselves and talking a bit about the agricultural history of the property <coughs> on 1230 Main Poland Road. I think all of you will be pretty familiar with that property and its history. Um, as well as everybody that was at the meeting. Yeah. yeah. To know it very well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I won't, I won't go into that again. Um, we then read the draft proposal, which you guys have. Uh, and reiterated mandated areas of address for the meeting uh, and took questions and had a discussion. The, mandate, uh, the mandated points discussed uh, from, or I should say, for the town included a type of business proposed, which is cultivation and manufacture. We described the growing and manufacturing methods we would use and the size and type of spaces required. It was asked if we would open up a retail component to the business and if approval by the town of our existing proposal would mean that we could automatically have retail sales at 1230 Main Poland. Uh, we responded that we had no, pr no plans for retail. A retail license would be an entirely separate application process for us and retail did not seem a good fit for a location. <laughs> um, size and type of structure proposed for facility, up to 10,000 square feet of greenhouse, uh, shipping containers, and renovations of existing buildings on property. Neighborhood and environmental impacts, including but not limited to lighting, noise, odor, water usage, traffic, etc., and any studies or data to support conclusions. Uh, we were also taught, asked to address um, steps or insurances on measures that will be taken to reduce or mitigate any of the identified impacts. And I've just combined those two together. <coughs> so, um, so all identified neighborhood and environmental impacts were discussed and answered in detail. Most identified impacts are included and de dealt with in greater detail in our draft proposal. Uh, lighting will be in, client, in compliance with CCC and town regulations. Our presentation of the draft proposal covered lighting in detail. Assurances were given that residents and, and wildlife would not be impacted by light pollution. Uh, noise, there is no anti anticipated noise impact from the project, so we did not discuss it anymore. Um, Odor control was discussed in detail. In addition to descriptions of odor control systems and technologies, our location slash siting was highlighted as ideal for outdoor cultivation odor mitigation because of remoteness, lack of neighbors, and our complete surrounding by forest and advantageous <coughs> prevailing winds. Water use will be responsibly managed and our water usage plan uh, included in the draft proposal was presented. Traffic, the frequency and safety of delivery vehicles operating on Main Poland Road was discussed. Assurances were given that as a wholesale facility, deliveries and traffic would be limited and the size of the vehicles would be small, i.e. delivery vans. North Poland Road was suggested as a safer route for, uh, for delivery vehicles. 
Compliance with CCC security and safety regulations for de delivery vehicles was also assured. Uh, questions were raised about the school bus route. However, a community member, member provided clarification that the school bus route does not pass by the proposed I think the distance was 1,700 feet. Is that, that's a, totally. the, the distance from uh, North Poland Road and it's about your property. Because so. the only way the school bus is going to pass your property is if you yourselves have kids. <laughs> Correct. Because <laughs> right now it's a van. No, right. No, right now it's a van that goes up Main Poland Road and turns around because the bus can't do that. And, and a bus that goes up North Poland Road. So the other direction it goes. Correct. Okay. Yeah, but I bet that you'd have to take your kids down to North Poland Road. I mean, you know, they walk the fifteen hundred feet. This they is not an anticipated issue for us. They, I, no, no, no. They've tightened that up. There's they, no bus going past the property. Correct. No, there is none. No, okay. absolutely not. There is Go on. And then he refuses to do that. <coughs> All right. So security examples of security measures were discussed as well as presented in the draft proposal. We stated that we would be in compliance with 935 CMR and the Town of Conway Zoning Bylaw 11. We are taking on early investors in particular to navigate security compliance issues and, and costs. Uh, appearance plans were presented to show how we would maintain an attractive appearance in keeping with the community norms. This includes compliance with the Town Bylaw, limiting the size and type of structures allowed. Uh, in addition, we proposed an, an attractive, low-intensity agricultural buffer around the cultivation area and the renovation use of existing, of existing structures where permitted. Concerns were ex expressed by a community member about the potential for a prison-like security fence. Uh, as practicable, practicable and allowable, we will direct our resources towards integrated security technologies focusing on monitoring and alert systems and multiple security barriers as possible ways to limit the size and scope of our physical barriers. Additionally, the fencing would for the most part not be visible from the road or surroundings. Diversion to and, and effect of business on minors, children was a topic of concern and there were two parents uh, at the meeting uh, and I think there was quite a significant back and forth on that. Um, so regarding our diversion of our product, we stated we aren't proposing retail. Our location is isolated and will be fully compliant with all the security requirements. We, have, we will have detailed operational procedures for tracking inventory and sales, uh, as I should say, mandated by the CCC, sorry. Our products are being developed for the adult use recreational market, so labeling packaging will emphasize artisanal craft cannabis cultivation and manufacturing processes. We will be targeting socially, environmentally conscious consumer markets interested in sourcing local, organic, boutique, <coughs> and low impact products. So um, you could compare our product as fine wine to wine coolers. And this seemed to um, satisfy the concerns of the parents present at the meeting. Uh, Mass Endangered Species Act. We presented our draft filing to MESA regarding PH, uh, Protected Habitat 1755, which is uh, a woodland turtle. We stated that our draft filing was positively received and consulted on by state biologists. I should clarify, it's not a, an official filing, but that was just correspondences with, with them. Um, organic, low-impact cultivation and natural safe manufacturing plans were discussed, and a number of attendees uh, explicitly expressed a general support for this approach. Um, where the proposed facility would comply, uh, should, sorry, I should say, with Conway's zoning bylaw, Article 11, we stated that we are confident we will deliver full compliance with the zoning bylaw. Uh, where the propo proposed facility would require a deviation from Conway's zoning bylaw, at this stage in the process, um, we've only uh, we're only aware that potentially our barns uh, would require uh, a variance. We stated that renovating the barns is potentially more expensive to the business than putting up a new ag building, uh, but if there is a shared interest from the town to renovate our existing barns, uh, we welcome the opportunity as they're more in keeping with the appearance uh, appropriate to the community. A denial of this variance would not impact the overall project significantly. I 
think that's it. Um, I can go over this uh, draft proposal if you would like. Um, is, is there a sense that... Or are there any questions about that? Can you, can you go through it uh, quickly? Yeah, I, I can go through it. So, highlights, I guess I'll just go through the highlights. So, we're proposing about 35,000 square feet of organic outdoor cultivation, mm -hmm. up to 10,000 square foot organic greenhouse cultivation and solventless manufacture. Um, what that means is detailed in the, in the application. Okay. Uh, there's a site plan overview on page two where you can see the distance to our nearest neighbor and neighbors and surroundings. Um, the closest private residence property is over 1,700 feet away. The property is completely surrounded by state forest, wildlife management, and conservation land, and the property was recently a working farm and has been maintained for agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, then there's a site plan overview with a key so you can see where everything is going to happen on the property. Um, the perimeter fence, the cultivation area fencing, uh, our private residence, which overlooks the cultivation site, um, plans for our headquarters uh, for manufacturing, processing, and, and an office, plans for a propagation room. So the perimeter fence is the outer yellow line? Correct. And that would just be whatever the town would like to see. Uh, it's mostly for to keep our, our sheep and um, <laughs> poultry uh, safe. Um, and then the inner yellow area is that's where that, the cultivation will right. Be. And that's gonna there there will be a back and forth between the CCC and us as to what they would consider to be an acceptable level of security. Um, there's a lot of Flexibility there written into the into the law, so we just have to wait and see what they what they say. They may be fine with us having six foot um, agricultural fencing and screening. They may not want uh, significantly more. So, so to, you know, to what extent does the opinion of the local constable? Uh, uh, it matters a lot, actually. Yes. Yeah, and in fact, um, there's a, a process for review of you, so you can re request variances with your security <coughs> protocol and they'll consider that. Um, and then there's a mechanism for uh, a back and forth with, uh, with the town and, and, the, and the hospital. Okay, thank you. So you can well, start that, that's a process that's gonna, that awaits further on down the We're not convinced path. that we need yeah. or want any variances. It would be more like if the CCC came to us and said, no, we want razor wire. Right. And we were like, eh, we really would prefer using other methods. And then there could be a back and forth. This is all sort of new territory as well. And until we actually get into the process with the CCC, we're flying a little bit blind. So, uh, you know, obviously, I think the preference is always going to be to, to try to facilitate things that the town wants um, more than anything else, I think. That I, so that was an issue that came up and was talked a lot, and I think it was caused by the, the picture that you showed about outdoor layout and cultivation, where you were trying to show the... I'm just trying to show the grow bags and how you can and, put them on the and, ground. And the fence and, there looks fairly minimal. Right. Uh, and and that, that scared people, I think. Right. Yeah. So note, yeah, make a note that that fence is uh, not meant to... Yeah. Should have edited, edited it out. Um, Okay, shall I move on? Please. So then the barns, I think we talked about that. We, we might need a variance for one of them because of a, a, a road setback. Uh, currently, they're being used for overwintering our livestock, hay between storage and tool storage. And that's because it's a change of use? Change of use and the barns need repair. You know, uh, well, it's a pre-existing structure, but if you're changing the use, then it, then you have to be re-reviewed. Right. Yeah, no, we, we would anticipate that would be a, a fairly extensive process to, to go through. Um, 
No. We need to renovate it so that it would serve the purposes of the business. It, there, right. There would be additional electric and so forth that would be run to those mm -hmm. barns, and that Security. would probably trigger some additional um, building inspection reviews and so forth. Those were bad shape five think, years uh, ago when I saw them. I don't know what they're like now. <laughs> I, I think we should. Uh, we, 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 we can look at the plan. We'll be looking at this, you know, um, over some period of time, right? perhaps not terribly long. We, uh, we've had, we, we we've had a talk about, so a little bit more about the business itself. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what Josh is here to talk about the business structure. Um, I can keep going, or we can just def um, defer to that. I guess uh, John would, has. Um, you yeah, I, I, to go your, your plan is is very comprehensive. Um, certainly, uh, uh, certainly well thought out. Uh, Josh, could you give us a little bit more about the, uh, the, the business itself? Yeah, sure. So you should have include, included a uh, uh, list of the small list of our uh, co-investors. Uh, one of our goals has been to keep outside investment sort of as minimal as we can and to start as low capital intensive as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully the viability of the business will then provide for future growth. Uh, the, there seems to be, a, there's no dearth of people who want to be investing in this sort of business right now. I'm sure. And, and so we're very, both very particular about who we're picking to, to bring, bring on board. Um, uh, we've had some shaky offers. <laughs> but for the most part, uh, it's, uh, this, th this is a sort of a friends and family list for us. So these are people we know. Um, the, the overall goal, goal for the initial outside investment is we're targeting about $400,000 right now. Mm -hmm. With our investment pool that we have, we're confident that if we need to flex up, uh, we, have that, we have that ability for sure. Uh, but also, if we if we don't need to go as high as for four hundred thousand dollars, that's that's great too. I anticipate that probably that's about the right number right now. Um, although in my experience, if I think that's the right number, <coughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it'll probably be a little bit more. The right so, number is sort of out of your control too. There's so many variables. There's there. a lot of variables, yeah. and uh, and it's a it's sort of there's no template or model to look at. So mm -hmm. we're we're kind of making it up as we go, but I think we feel pretty confident with our, um, at least our initial projections in terms of uh, what our overall costs could be, uh, what our overall revenue could be, you know, anybody's guess. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, the company itself uh, will probably be divided into two LLCs, one covering the cultivation side and one covering the production side. Was that? Mm -hmm. um, and that's to give us flexibility both in, uh, in our tax filings uh, and also flexibility in terms of the overall investment structure so that if investors need to opt in or out of any particular piece, they, they have that flexibility. Um, <clears throat> it's quite possible to do it under one umbrella as well, um, and that would actually probably alleviate some of our filing costs. Uh, but functionally, for the, from the business perspective, uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference and probably gives us just a little extra flexibility going forward. Mm -hmm. That's the thinking there. Um, uh, and that's why you should have two, two separate uh, I mean, post agreements there, one for, the, one for the cultivation and one for the um, production. We received guidance from our, um, from our CPA that Mm -hmm. Either structuring it as a single entity or as multiple entities wouldn't be a particular regulatory concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in terms of the uh, community host agreements, um, is the reason we have two is because one of them is for one of the businesses and one's for the other. One is for manufacture. One is for cultivation. Um, yeah. We're essentially applying for, the CCC requires two licenses, mm -hmm. one for each specific piece. Right. You know, our feeling was it was probably an easier process to manage if we had two separate processes with the CCC as well. 
And this helps us do that a little bit. These look exactly the same to me. Should I? There, there's, there, there's actually differences. There, there are some, there's some yeah. minor differences. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's some okay. important differences. Okay. No, no, I, I just I, I have to carefully look so, at them. Yeah. So what I would suggest is you could imagine that these documents could be merged into one. It's yeah. certainly possible that that will go with a single entity um, or as is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There is this third possible. Third possibility is you create a holding company and then you have two. Um, subsidiaries underneath that, that's also doable. Mm -hmm. It seems a little excessive for our, our needs, but um, if it's helpful for, you know, we're also very open to being, you know, if it's helpful for the town to see it one way or the other, that's certainly something that we take into consideration. All right, well, any other questions for John or Phil or Ogilvy? No, um, is, when it comes to um, ownership and, and, and what I do, does the, does the CCC require more information than what you're giving us right now? Yeah, the CCC is going to require a more detailed financial disclosure from the investors mm -hmm. so that they can be assured that the, the capitalization is actually there. Mm -hmm. So we'll be providing them with all of that. Mm -hmm. We just felt a little premature. For, for and are they still doing financial background checks of all the investors? And there will be, yeah, all of that will happen. I mean, that, that's the, I've heard that concern from people too, that just be careful that we're not creating in our own town a you know, waste management thing, the New Jersey ninth, circa 1980s, you know, and that you just... Uh, well, one of, the re yeah, one of the reasons we actually provided you with this is we just wanted you to get a sense of who the people were that were involved. These are all sort of uh, established and... Um, I don't know, it's not Philip Morris or Yeah, this, these are... Hampshire these college graduates. A bunch of... Wow. Well, <laughs> Hampshire's been in the news a bit lately. I'm not yeah. sure I want to doubt that so much, but... Yeah. But not yes. a bad way. Yeah, a lot of us are, are from Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. great. And Philip is. Yeah, Philip yeah. is Hampshire. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for You're Conway me. now. Yeah, we're Conway, we're Conway now, for sure. <laughs> All right, good. We have a lot to review. Uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, there's, there's a gentleman in the back had a question about it. Can I ask a question of you real quickly? Mm -hmm. I saw in your paperwork there there's a community impact payment. Has that already been negotiated with the town? Right, that's good that we talk about that, right? So, <laughs> the... <laughs> the <is> zero. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't. We haven't. That's for you guys general. to consult Someday. with your lawyer with yeah. as to yeah. what's appropriate to ask from us. Right. And then, and then we'll... Yeah, we're, 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 we're not at that point yet. Right. Um, do you think you would, do you think you would be asking farmers for payments on their products? We're, we're, we're not, yeah. at the, we're not at the point yet where we're, we're looking for an impact. Okay, excellent. When, when, when we know that, we'll, we'll let you know. You don't see that on the horizon, it hasn't been talked about? The, the sales tax, yes, the impact, um, we haven't discussed at all. But sales tax on cultivators, on retail, sure. On, on gross sales. Of, no, that's of the cultivators? same, the impact fee is the same as the... Um... Potentially. Mm -hmm. So you're okay. talking about sales tax so up on... Up to, yes. Potentially sales tax on what they grow? Yes. That's and correct. then it's going to be taxed for the and the also? The, so, yeah, the law allows municipalities, the first new revenue stream that they've granted to municipalities in a long time, and um, we, we, I feel pretty much duty-bound to explore that revenue stream to some extent. Um, and, and, you know, the, it's... Yeah, it's taxing plants that come out of the ground. Wow. And Yeah, I know, but... Wow. But um, and the man at, at its work. root, look at that. It's what at its root, look at that. At its what root, you just that said. Fun? That was a, a, that's a, that's a, that's a good pun. <laughs> and what you just said, taxing a plant as it comes out of the ground, that's going to start somewhere and it's going to lead to a bad spot. And you know it can. Uh, yeah, okay. you're, you're Mr. Moore. Yeah. Yeah, we, we haven't decided on any of those things yet. Okay. Oh, I know you haven't decided. Okay, we haven't. All right. And thank you guys for coming in. Thanks. Don't pay. Don't pay. We're going to start all farmers having to pay. I'm a farmer. I don't want to have to pay for my crops. Okay. You stop timber tax, you stop timber tax, you stop a lot. That's all right. Thanks for coming.
Conservation Committee stuff. Um, oh, are we going to talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah, just, just to note that um, Leah is being nominated by the Conservation Commission as a candidate for um, what's going on. It's on. Right, late, that's, that's down late, on the agenda. Later on our agenda with someone else who will not be able to be here tonight. So, and you don't so have to be here. You don't, you don't have to be here. You don't have to be here. You don't have to stay. No. Okay. No, no, but you're about to be Thank formally you. appointed to the committee <laughs> <That's> <laughs> by it. our vote. I can't wait. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good. She okay. went through. She got through your background check? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Okay, joint committee with the finance, joint meeting with the finance committee. Tom, you have a budget review? Yeah, you should all have the, uh, the clerk's uh, budget. We have the clerk here. Um, and uh, this may well be the last time we have this town clerk with us to go over the budget, so. And that will be a shame. What is that? Uh, yeah. What? what? You know, you got to stay around a little longer. We say that about Tom Brady well, every year, too. So, you know. <laughs> there, is a, there is a provision in here which she would be delighted to discuss with you. Oh, which one? <laughs> like the second line? Consulting. Yeah. Yeah. That was just to um, have some availability to assist if it is necessary. Mm -hmm. That represents eight hours a week for six months. So can I ask about that? That's the train, that's the train somebody? Yeah. Basically? Yeah. That, that, that's her that's as a me. consultant to the new town clerk. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, sure. I Is there a reason that you limited it to six months? <laughs> no, seriously, I, 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 thought, I thought the one year life cycle of the position <laughs> to, to, to be tutored a, a, like approaching town meeting and all that, I mean, there's that as the year goes by on the calendar, there's certain, rest and I thought a full year, like that, that's, that, that amount, that amount spread over a full year seemed to be more, to make more sense than that amount in six months. Well, I just, that's what it represents. Yeah. It does, it's not limited right. to six months. It's not limited to six months, no. Okay. It's limited to the number of hours. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought, um, I thought it was. And yeah, that's here. Whoever whoever does it may not need me much during the rest of this this year when she's going to really or when this person is going to really feel the pinch is when we're headed into January next year and you've got um, street listing and preparation for the presidential primary and early voting and absentee voting and preparing the caucus ballots and all that stuff right at the beginning of the year. And one, the one person that has expressed some interest in it so far has been in for um, a few hours testing the waters. And I'm trying to put together kind of a very small Type handbook that says this is this is what you do in that January. This is what you do in February. This is what you do in March. This is what you do every day. This is what you do every month, and you know stuff like that. Good idea. So that there will be some something there on paper. All right. So the only change in your budget actually is that 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 one line for um, that consulting one. I think there's another one where I put in some extra money. Tuition and meetings. Yeah, trains. tuitions and meetings in case in case whoever it is wants to go to meetings. I always after about Tuition. ten years, I I found that they were more social gatherings than they were informational for me. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that getting other jobs to supplement the income that I got on this job <clears throat> was actually more important than going and socializing. 
right? Okay. Well, that's certainly important. That, that other item. So, and, you know, for someone that's new to it, you can pick up a lot of information. You can also pick up a lot of information from reading the emails that come from other town clerks. There's like a clerk's net. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a question, you can say, help, I need thus and so, and put it out there, and <coughs> one of the 300 and some odd clerks is going to answer you. Thank you, Jenny. Any questions for Jenny on her budget? The, the, so, Jenny, the, the past bunch of years, you know, boosting the, the pay up, you know, to get it to, to try to get it contemporary. Yeah. And so, based on that, the, the person to be hired, are they going to be green? Are they going to be a rookie? Hard yeah. to say? No, they are. Yeah. Okay, so the pay is boosted, but it's still going to be a rookie. Yep. Okay, no. I don't think it's up to me to uh, make that determination as to whether or not it gets cut. It's certainly the same job and the same responsibility. Right. It, it might is. not be done as efficiently, but this is, uh, in essence, a salaried position. So, and, and we have it uh, figured at 25 hours per week. And uh, Jenny's explained to me that that is, um, that that represents sort of an average, but it can be above 30 hours in the presidential year. Sure. Um, so we, we, we can look at that later. Um, it's, it's relatively, it looks relatively low for a position because it's not full time. Uh, and it, it, when we finished bumping it up, it was pretty much the, uh, the average of the comparable towns for what they were paying their town clerks when we finished doing that. So you're going to keep a documentation manual for this person to have that's part of your goal of uh, some consultation I'm, I'm trying to put together a, a it, it's like a review of the position. Okay. It's, it's not in detail. I mean, All right. <coughs> excuse me. There's a set of notebooks. Um, six, they're called the golden books. They're six, uh, three, two and a half to three inch binders that are a, they were put together by the Town Clerks Association back in, I think, 1984 um, as a, to explain what the job is and what needs to be done and pull in all the laws from all the different parts of the uh, general laws that apply to the town clerk. So that set of books is still there. The one on vital records is basically passe, that, because the whole system has changed in regard to vital records. But in, in, in most of the other instances, everything is pretty much the same. Elections has changed considerable, but um, the guts of what you do for the paper ballot Situations like we have are are still the same as they were more than 40 years ago. We also have a job description that was drawn up at the time that uh, we were considering having the uh, town clerk be an appointed <coughs> position. That's not the case, but it's still a valuable uh, precy of the work. Uh, Any other questions for Jenny? Any thanks for coming in? Okay, you don't want to know anything about the other two budgets? <laughs> uh, yeah. Which other two budgets? <clears throat> elections and, and registration. Elections and registration. Elections, elections is... Elections is down because yep. there is no elections. Yeah. Right. There's, There's not a, a state election. Do you get paper on that? No. Okay. No, it's... it's uh, sorry, uh, should have included it. Uh, they don't have a copy of it. They don't have a copy of it. Tell us all about it, though. Um, elections is basically down, uh, not quite two thousand dollars. From, from what to what? It from last year. From from eight thousand ninety five to six thousand six hundred. It's a drop because there's there'll only be <clears throat> excuse me a presidential primary and a town election that will come in on this budget. The next budget's going to be up again because there will be a presidential election and right. a state primary and a county election. <coughs> so.
So that is, let me see. Yeah, that's about the same. It's, it's just dropped a little bit in, in um, what the, the salary, the salary amount. They call it the salary amount, but it's the hourly rate that we pay the workers that come in. And the Board of Registrars, I have um, also increased that. I've put in postage to cover <clears throat> mailing um, street list information because quite often what I do is I, what I, turn that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a lot of a lot of the street list information is in here. So, for instance, like the people living up the street here, there's no point in me sending them a 55 cent letter when basically they're the same people living there. They've just gotten a year older. So, mm -hmm. I I do the ones that for the people that I know, and then ones that I don't know, I send them the forms. Mm -hmm. okay. And so uh, what I have put in here is postage to cover somebody else mailing the forms to everybody. And you'll pass this information forms. along to... The what's up here, I'm not... So that's like a hidden cost of your retirement to the town. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jim. So, but you did so increase the I, postage, so... What? Yeah. If I get arrested, it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Okay. Tom, non-capital special money articles. Yeah. We all have uh, a list. Uh, I have one thing to correct right away, um, which I just did. Uh, today it didn't make it onto this sheet. But right up at the top, um, Frontier Regional School District Capital Borrowing, all we have to do is authorize that debt. We don't actually pay um, through our debt service for that. We are assessed for that. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Good. And, and so, so that's, that's, that's not money to spend, so it shouldn't be included uh, there shouldn't be anything in the amount, and that gets taken off the total at the bottom as well. Uh, right now, these are the items. Um, these are all the possible items that we have, and uh, some notes on them. And there's, there's two lists. The first is by department, so you can see who's asking for what. And the second list is by source of funds, so you can see um, where those are slated to come from in the budget that I'm creating. Now, that's subject to change, but I think uh, what I've come up with makes sense in a lot of ways. Uh, it, one of the great pieces of news here, one of the great pieces of news here is that uh, this, we got so much free cash this year that spending these amounts on, on uh, of, of free cash on these items still leaves us with $100,000 to roll over to next year. And I think it's important to do that. Um, and not to go nuts with the hundred thousand dollars and try to spend it all. It's a mark of good fiscal health in the community that they can roll over a substantial amount of free cash to the next year. It provides a buffer for um, towns, especially as they they get closer to their levy limit. Then I have a um, uh, final sheet and uh, an updated. And I'm sorry, it still has the timing. So the hundred thousand will be uh, additional preparatory funding for the rental all over next year. Time to turn that in. Time to store some funds. And the time to turn is that this hundred thousand all over potentially. 
We have mentioned 100,000 to roll over from the next year because of free cash. Yeah, um, the, the, the note is, um, is, is there. Uh -huh. <coughs> no. But you got to spend everything. Spend everything but I'm just telling you. 101,000, 113 out of the board. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I reduced the amount of school, uh, projected school, from instead of going up 5% uh, to going up 4.5%, uh, still to be conservative. Um, but that, together um, with, the, uh, with the drop in the insurance, this is, sh this is showing under 3% as a rise. Now, if that 37000 uh, that we're going to pay on the frontier capital. Uh, if the if the thirteen thousand that we're going to pay on the capital debt, uh, I'm sorry, it's thirty seven thousand. If that gets included in this, that would bump up to three point five eight percent. So, this is the percentage is pretty sensitive to even a few tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> Uh, so I am obviously really anxious to see any kind of even preliminary numbers that are being uh, talked about and um, perhaps if those have been made, if passed out of the school committee meeting, they could be... No, I can tell you Thursday at uh, 4.30 is a Frontier Budget Committee meeting that I will be going to where they, they will be It'll fresh be numbers, fresh and numbers. Fresh numbers, that's great. And Conway will, will pass out some kind of draft uh, this this month's school committee which is the 21st, right? I believe it's the 21st 21st so they haven't passed out any numbers yet That's a school. Um, they passed out some numbers Alan they passed out the, the numbers that they passed out at January's meeting did you find them il illustrative of anything other than they don't have much numbers to pass out that's correct yeah okay I'll wait. So, and he, Alan did come to the January okay. meeting where they gave the first go of it, but uh, I'll wait. Bet between okay. the renta, the renta finance manager, and yeah, the, um, it was very wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to have something in here, and I want it to be um, conservative but realistic. So uh, maybe you can advise me a little bit on on the history of the development of numbers. Have they gone up? Have they gone down? That sort of thing. From, no, the, from the health insurance number is a very good development on the school budgets. Okay, um, that's good. That's and good. and uh, the projections are now lower than they were wow. uh, earlier. So okay, well, yeah. So if, if you can get me those draft figures as they come out, um, just just the Conway assessment. Just and and the thing is that we're going to have the uh, capital assessment, and that's going to be dealt with. I'm not sure how they're going to deal with that on paper. So there's, there's the regular assessment, and the capital assessment will be on top of that. So we need to make sure that whatever gets put into this number includes both of them. Yep. And then transportation we account for as a separate line item, uh, I think because it's potentially volatile. We've had group go for a long time, but <coughs> we're always expecting not to. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those contracts just went out. I know um, I don't... I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I'll find out on Thursday what the what the, who the winning bidder was, or if the time for the bids has passed and the award has been made. But I do know Gripco was bidding again, and we were all thanking our lucky stars for that. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Well, so um, so that's a, that's another number which yeah. would be helpful for me to have. Uh, other than that, um, I did take off the um, the budget number up top um, for Frontier. So we have a new, a new total for uh, for non-money items. Again, we're spending. I, I mean, for money items that are not on the, on the in the operating budget. Um, we're spending again. We're spending no tax money on those. Um, and I have over in the the last column, the the bottom right is the is the total dollar rise from 19, uh, fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 20 
for both the town and the schools. And they're both looking pretty low right now, which I think is really, really lucky. This situation will not continue. We need to plan for the future. Yeah. Um, and we're pretty much dependent on, you can see how dependent we are on the schools for, they, they just outweigh the town in terms of, um, yeah. it's 60% of the budget. So, yeah. so uh, we, I think we've done a real good job on the, on the town side. Yeah, certainly. And I think the school's gonna have done a really yeah. good job this year too. Okay. All right, thanks, Tom. Um, we don't have anything on other <coughs> town meeting or budget business. That's all. That's what you just did. I have a question. Do we have anything by on the uh, on the docket for this uh, budget go around cycle for fiscal year twenty from the long term capital plan committee? I didn't see anything on the schedule. Next week, uh, their report is due. Okay. Um, I don't know whether they've been able to meet with the. Uh, Highway superintendent, they I think they got a late start, and uh, the time that they chose for the meeting was also a meeting of the highway facility committee. Uh, so the superintendent notified that he would be unable to attend that. Uh, we were meeting. scheduled to meet with Ron, but it was the night of the snowstorm, yeah. and so we called the meeting so we could get home, and it was pretty clear Ron wasn't going to make it. Sure. He, he had notified the chair that he was not going to be able to make it yeah. prior to the meeting. Who's the chair? Dana, Dana Goodfield. Dana. Uh, so we, we may have a, a, an incomplete report, but um, we will have all of the items. There are five highway items, one board of health item, and one fire department item. Yeah, that we heard about already. Yeah. yeah, although, I mean, I can report on that one, and you may be pleased with this, but, but Bob felt it was very reasonable to just buy six of the ten yeah. respirators yeah. now yeah. and to buy the other four next year or in the one, future. I thought he said one per year for the next four years after that. He, yeah. We didn't yeah. talk about it. Right, right, right. It, it, would, it would be good to get a, a staggered schedule for that. Yeah. 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 Figure it out. yeah. Okay. Gentlemen. Right. So I'm, <clears throat> while I had had some absences lately, uh, I was I was at the uh, one of the improvement meetings when we were discussing uh, mostly the highway supers, uh, and, and so I just wonder if um, I I can see both sides of this sort of friction that has developed in this area um, and I just didn't know if it was spelled out to you guys in any but my understanding is our super would like to have some flexibility in what he purchases where certain uh, certain elements of the uh, improvements uh, committee want sort of a commitment to basically an MSRP or something like well this is what you're going to get um, doesn't mean you, you Maybe you'll spend less for it, but, and, and so that's kind of the tug of war, I think, that has mm -hmm. developed. I mm -hmm. assume you guys are more or less aware of it. Do I, and I, do I have that correct? Yeah, but we didn't, he did, wasn't at the meeting that we had last week, so. Okay. Thank you, Roy. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. See you next week. Okay, next hey, item on the agenda. Yeah. Not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. We have a request from the Conservation Commission for expedited appointment of Tony Capabianca and Lee Bowden to the Conservation Commission. We uh, we saw Leah early uh, earlier tonight, so uh, she has been identified for. Excuse me, can we? Uh, um, Leah uh, was identified earlier tonight for us as one of the people who was um, interested in being on the Conservation Commission. And we have also um, gotten the name of Mark Capitanica. He's in California. The soothing sounds of Conway Town Hall. No need to put things away. Yeah. 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 So I think you mean Tony, not Mark. Tony. Tony. So both Tony and Leah 
I've come to the last few uh, Conservation Commission meetings. And Tony is available to come in next week to meet everybody and say hello. Uh, but in the meantime, um, the uh, Bruton, the chair, uh, would would find it uh, very useful if they could be appointed tonight to give them time to get sworn in and do the ethics test. Yes. I'll, I'll move to make those two appointments. Yeah. Hold on a so. second. Yeah, now, is Bruton aware that, that uh, well, they're going to have to do. They're going to have to make a uh, a review of the application for uh, Phil and Leah Bowden. Yeah. So she'll obviously have to recuse herself. Yeah. Okay. Um, so she wants to be on the conservation commission just because she wants to be on the conservation. So, I think Bob can speak to that. Uh, she and Phil moved to town and came to some of our select board meetings and said, what could we do to be helpful here in town? And <clears throat> that, that's the most glaring need we have at the moment. I think yeah, I, and we really, we needed people on that committee and commission and uh, she, she's interested in, you know, agriculture, so she's interested in land conservation and she said let me come to a few meetings and see what it's like and and she after a few meetings she and Tony both said we think we would like to do this okay and I encourage everybody I meet especially new residents to volunteer because yeah. volunteering is the lifeblood of the community and we, are, we always need them and Bruton who is the acting chair has recommended both of them yes, yes. okay and so at the last conservation commission meeting we voted to come to the select board and request that they be appointed. Okay. Phil, do you have a motion? I would move to for, for those two uh, for those two named individuals to uh, be on the conservation commission. Give them a second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Tony's involvement was similar. Tony came to the Conservation Commission and was involved in needing some, you know, get, getting some uh, permission to do certain kinds of work and end up saying, you guys work on interesting things. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's common for people to discover committees they want to work on by, by being exposed to those committees. And I, I don't think there's anything underhanded. So. I, I'm not, no, I'm not suggesting there is. Good. I'm just, yep. you know, there, particularly on the Conservation Commission, there seems to be people moving on and off depending upon what they're involved in personally sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know? But anyway, I thought, all right. I thought well, it was depending on how many times they get yelled at by property owners. Jack was on a long time and retiring was made a lot of sense and Peter's health is not good and he, he's not really able to trek off into the forest and look at people's property. Um, and, so. and, and just to uh, be very clear, um, uh, sorry I, I didn't jump in a little bit earlier, but th the motion should have been, um, do you have the, those sheets? Yeah, to point, to point them to the end of uh, June? Oh, for, uh, for no, term. there are two different terms. This is a three-year appointment as a standing committee. Um, both 2020. Oh, they are both 2020. Okay. Uh, to, to the end of June 30th, 2020. Okay. They, we, we're, we're trying to balance the um, the uh, cycle here. Okay. There, there, there are two that are going to be up um, in uh, in 21, I believe. So uh, we're we're trying to stagger it. Okay. So, so those appointments are made until till 2020. All right. Yeah, you know, in, instead of normally we do it to this coming June, but this is till right. the next June. You have an update for us, Tom? Yes, I do. In committee work, the Highway Facility Committee made great progress Tuesday night in developing a proposal to bring two separate articles to town meeting, one for the cold barn and one for the maintenance building. Uh, 
What is the word file I'm referring to? I'm not sure. These are not included in the word file. Ah, the the uh, the, the file you have for uh, actually it isn't. It is included in the uh, in the word file. Sorry, uh, for the uh, for the capital, uh, the, the money articles. The current idea is to have a simple barn, perhaps modular, built with the prep work being done by the highway department, thus saving money. This would be paid for fully out of highway stabilization, though we do not have an estimated cost for this yet. The second article would be to pay for the design and owner's project manager for the maintenance building in preparation for future borrowing, much as the last proposal, but with the cold barn removed. These funds would also come out of highway stabilization. Uh, we have enough money to pay for both articles and have a substantial amount left over for reducing any debt for eventual construction. That's based on a very seat of the pants estimated cost. So we don't have a um, we don't have a good estimated cost, uh, but we have a rough estimated cost. And then we would vote on those two articles separately. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we could either we could go forward with either of them or both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, this gives those townspeople who would prefer funding one building at a time to argue for that while allowing the possibility that both buildings could be moved forward, though to different degrees. Uh, my current calculation, based on estimates by the previous designer, is that we would need $196,000 for design, bidding, and construction management for the maintenance building. I'm not sure at this point how construction management is bid, whether and how it would be bid contingent on further funding, but I am pursuing the answer. Uh, so, for departmental news, the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust has voted to make some plan changes, though not as substantial as those proposed last year. Uh, this does mean we'll need to go through what's referred to as the 32B process again. Frontier okay. has offered uh, their lawyer to guide towns through that process, to guide the Frontier towns through that process. Can you just give a tense dime, dime novel description of uh, that process? Let's, let's not. Okay. Is that the process that wasn't done properly we, last year? We, we went by through it last year. By some towns? We, 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 yes, did, right. Right. we did it fine. Right. Other towns didn't we, do it. That's why there weren't planning changes last year. Right. We, we did it fine. We, we right. did it fine last year. We'll do it fine again this year. Um, we are continuing to improve our return internal accounting. As a result of discussion with the accountant, we are removing the debt service for the frontier borrowing, as I mentioned before, as it is not a town debt, and will include the capital service and the frontier line item, also mentioned before. We received word that the state has accepted, accepted the Franklin Regional Council of Government's proposal for a regional municipal accounting training program and staffing it. As we signed on as a partner, we will be working with the state as part of the grant process so I expect to bring you a community compact contract in the near future. Eversource will be setting new poles and running new wires over the next few weeks. They will keep us informed of the work and any planned outages, and will also contact anyone who will be impacted by any planned outage. Mm. Great. Outages. Thank you, Tom. Well, okay, select board comments. Any comments by the select board? No. Okay. Mail. Okay, in our mail, we each got a new um, beacon. Very good publication. Please read it. Uh, aside from that, nothing in the purple every, gold. Everything is old. Okay. Uh, Tom, you have any announcements? I do not. Okay. All right, our next meeting is. Uh, here on February the 11th, uh, a week from today, uh, at 6 p.m. If there's no more good business to come before the board, I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye.